God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. Today we'll begin studying the 25th chapter of the book of Numbers. Let me pause for a moment to let our newcomers know exactly what we're doing. Just listening to one session, you won't be able to understand the full gist of what we're doing. Uh, for you that are new, what we're doing is we're teaching through the Bible, verse by verse and chapter by chapter. We started with the Gospel of St. Matthew and went completely through the New Testament. Now we're well on our way in the Old Testament scriptures. I appreciate all of you that's been with us for a while and all of our newcomers, you're very welcome. And I want, to, I want you to know that I do thank God for you daily. I ask that you pray for me daily that God will get the glory out of all that we do. Uh, we have been on this journey now since April of 2011 in teaching through the Bible and and it's been a great blessing to me to hear from you uh, all over the world. I've heard from people from uh, the continent of Africa, all over the United States of America, Canada. Uh, I could go on and on, Switzerland and Australia and uh, 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 South Africa, Kenya, uh, to name a few specific places in Africa and, and also uh, the uh, United Kingdom. We've heard from people all over the world and I do appreciate each of you for listening, listening to us. Uh, again, I ask that you pray for us that God will get the glory out of what we do. Let's begin our study today in verse 1 of chapter 25. I trust that you have your Bibles and you will read along with us as we study the Word of God. The Bible reads in verse 1, And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit harlotry with the daughters of Moab. Now remember the study that we just come, out, come off of where uh, the king of Moab, he uh, uh, wanted to uh, pay a prophet to, to uh, curse the children of Israel, and God would not let the prophet cursed the children of Israel. So here they were in uh, cohabitation, if you please, uh, in the same area of the world. Uh, uh, their, their Israel had uh, subdued other nations, uh, and here the, ch the children of Moab was, uh, was there bordering them and in the section uh, of the world that they lived in. And so uh, the children of Israel began to commit harlotry with the daughters of Moab. Uh, in so many words, they were just having a big, big, big sex time and doing everything that they thought they were big enough to do with the children of Moab. Moab. You have to understand, Israel was a set-apart people, and God uh, himself uh, had led them to where they are. And it's a slap in the, it's a slap in the face to, uh, to the true and the living God when you uh, who know better, who you've seen the power of God and the work of God to, uh, to go into uh, 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 in cohabitation with other nations and their God. And that's exactly what the children of Israel had done. Again, verse 1, and I'll continue reading. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit harlotry with the daughters of Moab. I don't have to explain that word harlotry uh, to you. I hope that I don't. Uh, they began to do all types of sexual sins. And in verse 2, and they call the people into the sacrifice of their gods. What are you talking about? They were cohabitating and and uh, uh, sleeping with, if you please, and doing everything with the daughters of the children of Moab, and they influenced them to go and sacrifice to their gods. That's little G-O-D. Well, uh, you got to understand, and that's, that, that was a great big slap to the true and the living God. Verse 2 again, and they called the people unto the sacrifice of their gods, and the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. What a slap in the face to the true and the living God after he had brought them completely out of Egypt and, and delivered them in so many different ways and give them food to eat when there was no food for them to eat, uh, when they wanted meat because all they were eating was manna. They got tired of manna and began to want meat. God sent quail in for them to eat and so many, many, many miracles, uh, even parting the Red Sea for them to walk through on dry land uh, and deliver them from the hands of Pharaoh and here they do all of this go all, all of this way brought, God brought 
them every inch of the way and just now stop them from being cursed uh, and then they go into uh, 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 cohabitation with this nation and begin to serve uh, their idol gods. Now verse 3 reads and Israel joined himself unto Belpr. Uh, that is an idol, Belpr. And the anger, anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And I don't, I don't, I can't, I don't blame God for being angry after he did all that he had done for them. And they go to serve an idol. And God with no eyes, uh, with eyes and could not see, hands and could not touch, a God that couldn't do anything for them. And they had saw the true and the living God at his best when he brought them all this way. You got to understand God's anger was was kindled against Israel. And you have to understand why. Because God had been so good to them. Verse 4 reads, And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. Can you understand? God is getting ready to do something here. He was angry. Verse 5 reads, And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one of uh, of his men uh, that were joined unto Belpr. In other words, everyone that went over there and joined to this idol of God, they were going to be killed. They were going to be utterly slain. Well, verse 6 reads, And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. What happened here? This man brought a Midianitish woman. You got to understand when you cohabitate with with certain women, you fall in love with them. Evidently this man fell in love with this woman and he, he brought her a in before Moses. And you got to understand God's anointing always was with Moses. His very presence walked with Moses. In fact, uh, his Moses' face was radiant uh, uh, because the glory of the Lord dwelled with him. And, and they, he brought this Midianitish woman before Moses. Shall I read six again? <clears throat> Please excuse me. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto uh, to, uh, his brethren a, a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses uh, and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel uh, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Verse 7 reads, And when Phinehas, <coughs> the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, uh, saw it. Uh, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent uh, and thrust both of them through uh, the man of Israel and the woman uh, through her abdomen. Uh, so the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. Uh, this particular man, Phine Phineas, uh, you got to understand who Phineas was. Um, he was in that priestly line. Phineas uh, was the son of Ele Eleazar, uh, who was the son of Aaron. Uh, and God had given the priesthood to Aaron uh, and his son. So that made him a legitimate priest. Uh, what did he do? This man of Israel took this Midianite woman uh, into, uh, uh, in, brought him in the camp of Israel uh, and he thrust both of them through with a javelin. Uh, in order to thrust both of them, of them through with the javelin, uh, well, uh, they had to be close enough together uh, or in some type of cohabitation for the spear to go through both of them. Uh, well, he went after the man of Israel. I'm reading verse 8 into the tent and thrust both of them through uh, and the man of Israel and the woman through her abdomen. Uh, so the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. Uh, that plague was stayed from the children of Israel. God was getting ready to kill a bunch of them uh, because they went in and served an idol God. And this stopped that plague uh, where God was getting ready to slay many of them. Now let's read on in verse 9. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. Can you imagine 
24,000 people died. That, that's a lot of people. Uh, we have cities uh, or towns that are much smaller than that in the United States. You got to understand, uh, that's a small city. Uh, I can name a few here in Texas that are not 24,000. Uh, I can name some in California that are not 24,000 people. Uh, and all across this land, uh, I can name you small cities that, uh, that, that had that this was more people uh, than in all of those cities. You got to get that. Now, that's how many people died because of this plague. In verse 10, and the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, Phineas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, that have turned my wrath away from the children of Israel while he was zealous for my sake among them. And I consume not the children of Israel uh, in my jealousy. Uh, in other words, this man, uh, he walked as a priest, and this man uh, turned that plague away from the people. Uh, well, let's read on in verse, uh, verse 12. Uh, wherefore, say... Uh, behold, I gave unto him my covenant of peace. Uh, I give unto Phineas uh, my covenant of peace. Uh, I give that unto him. Um, he shall have it and his seed after him. Even the covenant of the everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God and made an atonement for the children of Israel. He was zealous for his God. He wanted to please his God. I'm talking about the true and the living God. He wanted to please him. Don't you know we should have that same zeal for God and want to do the will of God and the work of God? That pleases him. And this young man pleased the Lord. And God has established him uh, and his children forever. Uh, you got to get that picture, uh, how important of act that this man did uh, in just doing what he could or being zealous uh, to do and please God. Uh, let's read verse 14. Uh, and the name of the Ishmaelite uh, who was slain, uh, even who was slain with, uh, who, uh, who was slain, even who was slain with the Midianitish woman uh, was Zimrah, the son of Selu, uh, the prince of the chief house among the Simeonites. Uh, well, you got to understand, this was a, an Israelite, true enough, that brought the Midianitish woman in. That was his name now, uh, 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 Zimrah. Uh, now let's read on in verse 15. Uh, and the name of the Midianitish woman uh, who was slain was caused by the daughter of Zur, he was he was the head over over a, a people uh, and a chief house in Midian. Uh, can you understand? She wasn't just one of the farm girls. Uh, she was one of the leaders of Midian's daughters uh, that they brought in. Uh, one of the leaders of Midian's children that that uh, was killed. Uh, you got to understand, God does not play with people. And, and when you uh, provoke him to anger, well, he wasn't just per se mad uh, because she was just a woman. Uh, he was mad because they desecrated Israel and brought this sin and this folly uh, into the camp of Israel. Uh, you got to understand, and this man was killed and also the woman he brought in. And we just read their names uh, uh, in the 15th verse. Uh, now let's read on in verse 16. Uh, and the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, uh, Vex the Midianites uh, and smite them. Uh, well, God spoke to, to Moses. Now you got to understand, God was angry. <coughs> so God is saying here for Moses and the children of Israel to take the lead and take the aggression. Uh, he said, vex the, the, the Midianites uh, and smite them. That means kill them. Uh, verse 18, and they vex, uh, for they vexed you with their wives, uh, uh, wherewith they have beguiled you in the matter of Peor. Uh, and in the matter of Kozbi, the daughter of the prince of Midian, uh, their sister who was slain in the day of the plague of Peor's, for Peor's sake. Uh, you got to get that picture now. Uh, so God is saying, uh, I was angry. I'm angry. Uh, and because of the actions of Peneus, uh, the son of, uh, of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, uh, because of his action, uh, I stopped the plague from killing all of 
uh, all of Israel, uh, uh, many of Israel, the plague was stopped because of his zealousness. Uh, but here, uh, God said, I am not through. Uh, I want you to vex the Midianites uh, and slay all of them. Uh, you got to understand, God does not play games. Uh, you got, uh, let's, let's, let's think about this thing now. Uh, when, uh, when people serve idol gods, uh, anytime you cohabitate with them, uh, they are having an influence on you uh, to get you to serve their gods. And so God, he wanted to stop all of this and, and ordered Moses to vex them and slay all of them. Why? Because the, the children of Israel so in, so gullible and so influenced at that time and who would fall to such a thing. Well, God commanded him to slay all of them. Get them out of the way. Why? Because he loved the children of Israel and he wanted them to serve him and him only. We'll talk about this further in our next lesson, but I and I encourage you to be here. Well, my friends, I want you to know that I love you. I love you with the love of the Lord. If you would like to contact me for any reason, you can write me at the Word with Chester Ministries Post Office Box 200603, San Antonio, Texas, 78220. You can also reach me at my website, www.poemsbychester.com. Click on where it says about the author. There's a, pers there's a place there for you to communicate directly with me. It comes to all of my mail venues when you write in there, and I will respond to you. I want you to know that I love you, my friends. I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you.